I did not know that chronic stress could kill you. And it almost killed me and I should have known better. I'm a doctor, right? And so that was like the start of the journey. All right, my friends, we are kicking off 2024 in an entirely different way on Holistically Speaking. I am so elated that you are joining us for another year. And let me tell you, the big thing that we hear about this time of year is careers, changing careers. What do you want to do to up your career, change just different course of life, whatever it might be. And I have the guest that is the guest of guests to talk about this, especially when it comes to that busy brain, right? We have a busy brain that's telling us to go in a million different directions. So how do we calm it down? Well, Dr. Romy Mushtak is here. She is a board certified physician, an award-winning speaker, nationally recognized wellness expert, and she's here to share more about how to deal with that career burnout before it becomes burnout and handle that busy brain. Dr. Romy, homie Romy. Uh, <laughs> I love that. This is, this is too fun. <laughs> and, um, you know, thank you for starting off the new year with yeah. me. And really, I think your listeners or anybody that's watching us on your YouTube channel, I, I don't take anybody's time for granted in today's world. Mm. So the fact that you're sitting here with us, pull up a favorite hot beverage or cold beverage, and let's dig in. Like, thank you for inviting us into your living room or in your headspace, however you're watching us. Yes. Look, we. I've been... I'm newer to the world of neuroscience and holistic health and mental health. I haven't been doing this for my entire career like you have. You've really made this a mission. And what I love about you is that, you know, you're integrative, right? Mm -hmm. I, I love to work with doctors who are not just focusing on the Western medicine, but also bringing in the Eastern medicine as well. And you yeah. do that so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's the area I really want us to touch on because right. we need to bring these things together for mind-body connection. Mm -hmm. And as someone who works in the field of neuroscience, this is an area that I think we're really starting to understand the brain better and mm -hmm. realize that we have the power to change our thoughts, moods, behaviors, and habits. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean for you? Uh, well, actually, what I would love to do is just let's talk about your own story. Like, how did you really decide that I want to bridge the gap? Yeah, I, it was decided for me, Hillary, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, life can happen to you and then it, it happens for you. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to say that, uh, I, you know, I, I journeyed through my mess so I could help anybody with theirs. Mm -hmm. And I was that traditional neurologist and I honor every part of that being, you know, my journey of success was defined for me at birth in the newborn nursery by my father. Uh, I am the proud daughter of immigrants. English is my third language. And, you know, the story goes when I was born, the firstborn of an, you know, family of Asian descent and a daughter. And my dad understands like the opportunity that is in this country for a daughter compared back to Asia. He too is a doctor and walks in to the newborn nursery with a prayer, a mantra, an intention. I have one daughter and you will become a doctor. And then it was like my mom and my maternal grandmother and all my aunties, like that was their life assignment. Romy is to become a doctor and their additional prayer, which was, oh my God, she has such a big mouth. Will she ever find a husband? You know, literally that was like all I knew growing up. And I loved my job as a neurologist. I think that's a common misconception people have that you hate your job or you hear soul sucking career, but your job or your life path can be sucking your soul, but it doesn't mean you don't love it. And so I honor every aspect of my long journey from childhood to medical school to entering neurology at a time where less than 5% of the brain doctors in America were women. And um, not only was I seeing patients, but I was doing cutting edge research on women's health issues and hormones as it relates to a woman's brain and epilepsy and migraine. So um, I just will say this is I did not know that chronic stress could kill you and mm -hmm. it almost killed me and I should have known better. I'm a doctor, right? And so that was like the start of the journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people will read in chapters like five through nine of the Busy Brain Cure book, not only the science, but all the healers and people that came to help make me 
healthy. And one thing that's so important because I'll be sharing your podcast to my corporate audience. Every one of these is a powerful story of male allyship, sponsorship, and mentorship. Mm. Now, I, I was navigating my whole life, whether in traditional medicine or Eastern medicine, where there I was pretty much always the only woman in the room. And beautiful stories of the healers and the leaders that came along the way that mentored me. And here we are with the cure for the busy brain. And mm. um, I, I think that's it. And you can ask me more questions because I just gave it to you in like under two minutes, but it's so much deeper than that. Well, first of all, if you don't do this doctor thing and the doctor thing doesn't work out, you definitely have a career in voiceover and acting. <laughs> thank, you. Girl, thank you. I'm so honored coming from an esteemed journalist like you. Could I tell you what was one really big fun win? What's that? Um, you've gone through this before mm -hmm. recording an audio book. Mm. So the book is available on audio and we did it in one take. I didn't have to go back for the pickups, but I had an amazing Gordon director and, um, you will be able to hear in my voice the moments we cried and the moments mm. we laughed and the voices of my aunties are all throughout the book. So yes. Oh, yes, that's bringing you. in the ancestors. I mean, we learned it, so it, much from oh, our ancestry, yes. right? Yes. Oh, I so love that you said mm. that. Can I tell you something? Oh, this okay. This can is you tell me? Fun. You can tell the entire audience. Oh yeah, I, I, I feel like <laughs> every, every listener. listener you're so good at this. I just feel like we're we're sitting here over a cup of chai in my living room, like my aunties taught me. But um, I really, I've been researching the busy brain since 2017 when this idea first came in 2018. But I suffered a awful busy brain in the last two months when we were submitting the first draft of this manuscript. Mm -hmm. And I was doing everything that was in the protocol. And I realized like I was suffering so my I could understand what my readers are going through. But then something started to happen. I would go to bed really early, like at seven, eight o'clock at night, because without fail, I it's like I'm getting goosebumps. I would wake up at like 3.33 or 4.44 every morning and whatever writer's block was there was gone and something would be downloading. And you just said ancestors. And it reminded me like to honor the ancestors mm. that came before me. I am the first woman and this long legacy to break this chain of having a platform and an education and making impact like this. And um, I'm just having this personal moment right now in the middle of your podcast. So thank you for allowing me to have that and honoring my ancestors. I think I just had that aha moment right now with you. Thank you. I am so honored <laughs> that you had that moment right here on Holistically Speaking. And if anyone else out there listening has had those kind of aha moments, you know, let us know, share, share by sending an email, get, get in touch. You know, there's a way to do that through speakpipe.com slash Holistically Speaking and leave your own voice of how this podcast episode is resonating with you, with Dr. Romy, because this is what this show is all about. It's giving a chance for voices to amplify and not just our voices. I think right Right now, what you're sharing is there's the amplification of your ancestors' voices, yes. which are coming through yes. you right at yeah. this moment. So thank you for sharing yeah. that gift. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we can get so caught up with that busy brain. I'm guilty of it, too. And mm -hmm. I want to go back to what you were sharing about how you, as a, as a doctor, you know, a lot of times in the work that's of service, be it a medical doctor or a any kind of practitioner or working in the health field, we feel that that sense of empathy and compassion. And sometimes we forget about ourselves. And mm. I caught this firsthand this past June when I was speaking at the Global Havening Conference in uh, Dublin, Ireland, where I spoke in front of a group of doctors and practitioners. And afterwards, a number of them came up to me and said, wow, I never thought that I'm not putting myself first because mm -hmm. we're impacted by the secondary traumatic stress mm -hmm. of... Mm -hmm being in front of patients every day or clients that are hearing mm. things. So how you know, do you Hillary, it's not just healthcare. Yeah, it's so every right care. now I, I speak across every industry. Yeah. It's human resource professionals, mm. it's teachers, it's you know, hotel general managers, people taking care of hotel guests, it's it's everyone, airline pilots, flight attendants. Like it's this idea of a collective 
compassion fatigue, chronic mm. stress and burnout. And really I've been studying this, interestingly, this five, six year period where I was really doing the research was also the time where the global pandemic happened. Mm. And bottom line, I'll tell you this, is the stress tips or emotional resilience classes and mindfulness-based classes that we were promoting and I was also promoting before the pandemic, those are outdated models of stress management and we need something more for this chronic stress and mm. burnout mechanism. And, you know, I say it tongue in cheek, but it's really true. When I'm in front of high performing individuals across every industry, nobody wants to hear, hey, Hillary, just eat berries and breathe. <laughs> And everything's going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. And here's a TikTok, tock tick, as my aunties would say, of puppies hugging a baby to give you a feel good boost. Like that is no longer working. Yeah. And people are like, I want to leave this job. I hate my life. And we need to help them with the solution. And that's exactly what I, I hold the intention to make an impact is not only disrupting the world of brain health and mental health with the Busy Brain Cure, but also how we're approaching the burnout crisis in the workplace. So important. And I was listening to one of your TEDx talks. I think it was the one in Fargo where you, mm -hmm. so there was a quote that it like, it hit me so mm -hmm. hard. And it was career burnout occurs when our external world is not in alignment with our internal soul compass. And I have to be honest, that is very rare to hear from a traditional medical doctor because that in itself shows that you're bridging the gap between the mind body connection. And I was, it, it hit me really hard. Yeah. I think um, readers or people who listen to the audio book, I, our entire production team was in tears too. You're going to read in chapter three and four, no matter how much I loved my job, there was you know, to speak to your expertise, so much trauma of being a woman yeah. in a man's work world back then, no matter how much I loved my job and my patients and how alone I felt and some of the slights. And then realizing that the chest pain I was having mm -hmm. from chronic stress wasn't run of the mill acid reflux. It was achalasia with potential like precancerous lesions. And I ended up in life-saving surgery. And I was in such a dark, dark place. Mm. And I remember waking up in the hospital after surgery thinking, oh, good God, like nothing I've learned in medical school is going to help me now. Like I don't have the adulting skills mm. to take that next step forward. And it's truly that moment that I want is is quoted to both Buddhism and Sufism to Rumi is that when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. And I was so broken and humbled that like, man, did the global teachers arrive. And that's why my book is dedicated to every single teacher mm -hmm. that has helped me on this path. And I thought I was just healing myself sitting in the temple in Cambodia, meditating with the monks or working with the shaman in Guatemala. But somewhere along the way, as I started to heal and that darkness was like lifting up out of my spirit, I was like, oh my God, like I need to change the way I'm looking at brain and mental health, like that aha moment. And I think more colleagues like you and I, who are in the integrative functional medicine space, have had that aha moment of, of bridging both worlds, not being toxic and saying, choose one or the other. That's that's just social media people wanting clicks, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I want to mention, because we have talked about the book a couple times, the name of Dr. Romy's book is The Busy Brain Cure. So this is the best time to grab the book yes. so that you can put this in your library and really, you know, align with what you're saying, which yes. this book is, is an eight-week plan, an eight-week plan to find focus, tame anxiety, oh my gosh, and sleep again. Yes, Hello. Queen. Can we yes, talk about queen. sleep? I mean, we need to start the new year that yeah. way. And yes. can I tell you the best thing? So the book comes out January 9th mm -hmm. uh, globally in English and in a few other languages later in 2024. But let me tell you what it is. It's tame the busy brain. And the best part is diet is a four letter curse word in this <sighs> protocol and in my world as a chief wellness officer. We ain't going on no diet. Hey. <laughs> so when you come to Orlando, I'm going to show you how, and this is really humbling to say to an integrative nutritionist, 
we prescribe comfort food on my protocol mm. because we do biohacks with foods in weeks five and six of the protocol that you get to like eat food that brings you joy and that brings you comfort. And people feel amazing. Their inflammatory markers go down and most people end up losing the belly bloating. So they're dropping a couple pant or dress sizes by the end of the eight weeks. And you're eating delicious, healthy food. I remember when I was going through IIN, the in uh, Institute for Integrative mm -hmm. Nutrition, and mm -hmm. it was, you know, years ago, I remember learning that the primary foods are not necessarily the foods we put in our body. It's our surroundings, it's our environment, it's our spirituality. Mm -hmm. The mm. secondary foods are the nutrition that we eat, but food can yeah. be delicious and actually heal us. You know, if yes. we're, we're food and is medicine, food is yeah. medicine. And when we are enjoying it and we know that it's doing something mm -hmm. well for our body, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to be healthier and live healthier yeah. just because we're in a state of joy, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And here's the next thing I want to say. I really want to go to this thing about diet mm -hmm. and cleanses is we need to stop that. Mm -hmm. I say that not only as a doctor, because we know when you're on a strict protocol and having to do food prep, even if it's clean eating, you're going to be so stressed. You're creating trauma tracks in the brain around food that you're not going to absorb it well. But here's the second thing, as I want to say, as a chief wellness officer to global employees, the majority of the nutrition plans and integrative functional medicine are very um, Eurocentric. Mm -hmm. They do not include diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And so, you know, we want, I live in a world where one, as a mindfulness teacher, as a chief wellness officer, I want the vegans, the paleo, the carb lovers, the chocolate lovers, the fruititarians, whatever tarian you are, to sit at the table together and feel like you belong. Mm. And um, that's so key. 99% of the diet plans, show me one, will shame the foods that are tied to our ancestry, like my South Asian ancestry, or tied to religious holidays or family memories. And to your point of joy, these are the foods that are anchored in our memory, in our souls to bring us joy. And that's where food is medicine, not from the diets that the experts are pushing on you in the new year. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk like that specifically in that way. And that just was no pun intended, was a brain shift for me as somebody who, and yeah. we'll talk about that in a second, because when, and, and using foods as something that is in alignment with inclusivity and diversity and sitting around the table, like you said, it's not just sitting with different religions and cultures, it's actually being open to understanding what this food means to this, mm -hmm. this culture, this religion, this ancestry, mm -hmm. because if you embrace that and embody that, that can, I, I would imagine that just makes you feel good. And it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that if you're not, you know, you're not a meat eater, you should start eating meat because your family ate meat, meat, meat back in the day. It just means have a better understanding. This is knowledge. Knowledge is power. You know, it, it's, it's, if you're a vegetarian or vegan yourself, mm -hmm. wonderful. I celebrate you. And I'm a doctor who loves research. I agree with all the research of the benefits of being vegetarian or vegan. And there's also amazing research on Mediterranean diet and people who do eat animal protein that we all have our individual truths mm -hmm. and suffering is created when we try to stuff our truth down someone else's throat. Mm -hmm. And that's what the diet culture in the West is doing. And can I give you a scientific example? Please, for one? yes. When you look at all the trending diet plans in the last decade, they all shamed the use of rice. Yet rice is the most consumed food globally. Now, in the last 18 months, and I will find those articles and send them to you offline, Hillary, we found that some of the healthiest gut microbiomes were in South, Southeast, and East Asia, where people regularly for multiple meals a day consume basmati or jasmine or long grain rice. Mm. And yet it's vilified here in the West in most diet plans, right? 
And when I would tell holistic healers or colleagues that one of my comfort foods when I've been on the road and traveling and speaking is to come home and make palau, which is basmati rice with peas in it, and dal, which is like an orange mm-hmm. lentil. Oh my God, that's, you know, no grains and no rice and that's not healthy and you're a holistic health expert. And I'm like, it reminded me of the comfort food of my childhood. Like when my dad had a long day on call, his favorite food was rice, chicken, and dal. And when dad was comfortable, us kids became comfortable because we could see how hard Mm -hmm. my dad was working. And then it inherently became our food. And by the way, girl, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't that best to the cook and dal chaval is so easy to make. (laughs) Like, I also feel like a hero in the kitchen. Can we share a recipe? Yes, I will absolutely share my dal chaval recipe with you to put up for your listeners. I and love it. Yeah. By the way, um, we have the comfort food of all my loved ones at the back of the book and on the website that goes along with the book. And Wonderful. we want your listeners, I want to know what foods like are from your childhood or from your religious holidays and share recipes in our community, Hillary. We would love that. We're going to put that out there. And just as a reminder, the book the book is coming out January 9th, like Dr. Romy said, and it is The Busy Brain Cure. So I'm going to have a link to pre-order that book in the listen notes. Mm-hmm. But I'm also going to share something that Dr. Romy uh, is additionally sharing. That is Take the Br- Busy Brain Test. This is free. Yes. I did it too. This is pretty amazing because it's a number of questions, takes you about four mm-hmm. to five minutes. And let's just sit back and kind of think about how busy is my brain. And by yeah. doing that, you're going to find out some results that might shock you, might be alarming, so that you can make changes and make different choices that can yeah. align with who you yes. are. Yeah. And little brain shifts. So this yes, was brain the shifts. test. It, it's, it's a validated neuropsychology test that we relabeled the busy brain test mm-hmm. so we could take it into corporate America. And we had 17,000 people take it during our research period. So we could look at how is chronic stress and burnout affecting cognition and sleep and memory, your mental health and your physical health and your spiritual Mm well-being. And that gave us all this data of what does chronic stress in today's world look like? And then I was able to go into the research and say, what is the cure from psychoneuroimmunoendocrinology? Like you said at the top of the podcast, how we think and feel shapes ourselves And then we tested the protocol on a thousand executives and tweaked it. And that's where the eight week plan at the end of the book came from chapters 10 through 17. So if you've already taken the busy brain test and you're like, Hillary, Romy, for God's (laughs) sake, stop talking like a bunch of aunties sitting over the longest chai party ever. Just sister turn right to chapter 10. I got you right there. Yes. Oh my gosh. Love it. Absolutely love it. So like, can we talk about the Brain Shift Institute and also Evolution Hospitality? I want people to really understand what these two things are uh, within your within your business. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I am the founder of the Brain Shift Institute with the mission of helping individuals, um, you know, build high performing brains so we mm-hmm. can build high performing teams is exactly it. And that wellness is at the center of workplace cultures that are mm-hmm. succeeding today. Wellness is no longer a benefit or a nice to have. In 2018, um, John Murphy, chapter nine in the book, you'll read the story, had the visionary idea. He's the CEO and founder of Evolution Hospitality. He's now since moved on to Great Wolf Resorts, but he had the visionary idea to say, we're going to bring in a doctor and make her chief wellness officer. So I was now like kind of this decade of first. I was the very first medical doctor in a role like this in corporate America. Mm -hmm. You fast forward to today, 2024, there are dozens upon dozens of companies that have chief wellness officers, chief mm-hmm. well-being officers, chief health officers. Most of them are HR mm-hmm. colleagues, but many of them are medical doctors or psychologists as well. And my job was to take care of the well-being of our employees. And so making, doing the research in the company, listening to the needs of our people who run hotels 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and customizing a mindfulness and wellness plan for them. And um, we have this ridiculously high adaptation rate. It truly was a culture shift Mm -hmm. in the organization. And so now other companies hire me to say, how did you do that? Um, And so we do this. So I, yeah, so that's how the keynote speaking um, evolves. So yeah. And you're such a delight to listen to. You really are. You You really are. it's, It's an honor to be of service. I mean, you know, I hope, 
Hillary, what it is, is I remember how, I don't know if you've ever been in that place yourself where you felt so dark and alone. Oh, yeah. And people are around you and, mm-hmm. and you're still feeling alone. And I was in that place in my first job as a doctor and not a single colleague asked me if I was okay. You could tell visibly that I was struggling, but back then, like we didn't talk about mental health or burnout in the workplace. People were gossiping about me, but nobody asked if I was okay. And so I feel that of the many things that happen when I go to speak and share the busy brain and the brain shift protocol in a keynote lecture, that even if one person is sitting in the audience who feels alone in that moment, that they've been seen and they know from me that they're not alone and, mm. and, that, and that I'm teaching leaders to cultivate cultures like that. Right. And I've heard this from so many doctors and practitioners that they're never asked, are you okay? They're starting to be. But like you said, there was that fear of, mm. I don't want my doctor to be dealing with mental health issues of their own. And it's like, but the courage is the vulnerability mm. to share, I need extra help. And by the way, like you said, it's not just people in the medical field. It's every field. Everybody. Every, every field. field. And I- there's still this stigma that yeah. you're a leader and you're not allowed to have a therapist or go see a psychiatrist. And that's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And I, I just had that conversation with someone that said, we're a little nervous to talk about it because then it sounds like I'm coming from a weakness. I'm like, oh, contraire. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. vulnerability is your courage. Because well, in my brain, you know, my world, even as a brain doctor, I needed a professional to give me a tune up mentally mm-hmm. and physically. And I think it's a sign of strength as a leader when you say, I'm not just going to go figure this all out by myself. I'm going to use the resources I have available to myself as a leader and, you know, model this for the rest of my employees that if there's something I can do to help my peak performance, by seeing a therapist um, or an executive coach, or if there's something that is going on with my mental health and well being that needs to be healed. I mean, we are all humans before we're leaders mm-hmm. or doctors or, or CEOs, you know, and the, a human will suffer in their lifetime. And it is okay to seek help and counsel from someone that is there to offer healing. Absolutely. And thank you for being someone that's offering your expertise and be, and just sharing who you are. One question I would love to ask you, because you are so tapped in with the brain, and you mentioned a lot of different ways that the brain can be impacted and our health can be impacted, especially with stress. But how are we seeing more people with migraines? Because I feel like more people are talking about migraines. <laughs> you know, what I he- see is... You may be hearing more about migraines if you or a loved one is having more yeah. migraines, right? Yeah. What we do know is, is from my research, the research that's out there in other workplace wellness from the American Psychological Institute, that when we look at chronic stress levels in the workplace, they continuously are going up, as are the rates of burnout. So I talk in chapter one of the book, like how your brain is a airport traffic control mm-hmm. tower, And that it's not just about your mood, but the chronic, the busy brain center in the limbic system in your hypothalamus is connected like a global airspace Mm -hmm. to every other part of your brain and body and every organ system. So migraine can get worse with chronic stress, as can a myriad of other health issues, hormone imbalances, Mm -hmm. digestive issues, breathing, your immune health, your memory, like we see it all, but the busy brain specifically is a pattern in high achieving people that chronic unchecked stress and burnout leads to these three symptoms, difficulty focusing or adult onset ADD, anxiety and insomnia. And that's what I'm here to fix in the workplace. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So I want to mention again, if you have Any interest, which I know you do, in putting this book in your library. And you know what? Read it, take notes, pass it along, because that's that's the best thing. I love when people share knowledge, right? So the busy brain. Or share a copy with your doctor, too, because the middle section has all science. So Mm -hmm. in chapter um, 16 and week seven of the protocol, we have you go check labs. And a lot of traditional doctors are going to be like, what do you need all these labs for? Give them a copy of the book. Be like, right? let me show you why. <laughs> yeah, because like literally, yeah. Hillary, like had somebody checked my labs, I talk about this in the book, I probably would have had regular periods. And mm. I look back and wonder fertility issues. I kept thinking something's wrong, but chronic stress and burnout and 
nobody checked my full thyroid panel, even though I asked for it, you know, and I'm mad at myself. Like, why didn't I just order it for myself? Like, sometimes we don't have agency for ourselves mm -hmm. when when we're burned out or we're not thinking straight, you know, or we don't ask the questions. And I'm mm -hmm. sitting here in front of a, an, an actual board certified <laughs> doctor. Yeah. And, you know, it's okay to ask questions. I, I and I try to advocate for myself. And I try to encourage others to advocate for themselves that you can ask questions, don't be scared. You know, yeah. you have more knowledge about you than anyone else. You've and been on this planet back. and push and back. push back if they say no or go find another primary care doctor. Absolutely. Honestly. It is wonderful yeah. to hear you say that. Thank you yeah, for validating back. that. Because I wish I had done that for mm -hmm. myself yeah. and not let some male colleague tell me, now, now, little girl, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, no. Oh, no, hell no. no. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you said it because I was about to say it and I was like, oh, it's going to make the podcast X-rated. Like, Please, I I love getting the little E explicit rating and that's not going to get it. But I, when I, when I'm able to get an E, I'm like, I've made it. <laughs> yes, we're going to get along great because I curse in four oh, different yay. languages, right? Sometimes I'm a sailor on a dock. Yeah. I'll be honest. <laughs> well, what, you know, another thing I'd love to talk about regarding what you just said about pushing back. In the world of workplace wellness, there's a plethora of scientific platforms and apps that an employer will say, hey, Hillary, you work at this company and here's this app for you to use. And HR professionals will be like, we paid a lot of money and nobody is logging on. And I tell them my experience as a chief wellness officer of over 7,000 employees, because they know me as their Dr. Auntie Romy or homie Dr. Romy, the first thing I had to realize was they're not going to just contact me via email or pick up the phone and call. It's a text message. It's a message in my Instagram or LinkedIn direct messages. And nowadays I'm getting a lot of Instagram reels or TikToks from employees that are like, is this true? And that's what I feel like I'm fighting as a doctor and a chief wellness officer. They're not logging on to the platforms that have screened and validated scientifically knowledgeable you know, information, you're being fed by an algorithm, mm -hmm. you know, something that's getting, that's highly clickable and that's going to keep your busy brain and your dopamine reward cycle, your, your addiction cycle going. Mm -hmm. And so it's really hard to find truth out there. And so I, you know, give accolades to all my colleagues in healthcare that are adapting social media, the old guard, traditional guard and medicine was kind of like, why are you a doctor on Twitter, which is now X or Instagram or TikTok? And I think finally all the medical associations are realizing like, you've got to get on board. So I'm thankful to all of my colleagues who spent a lot of their free time for free, not getting paid, dispelling myths that are online, but it's still really hard. And so that's what we're dealing with. And, and that's kind of the busy brain of the healthcare world, mm -hmm. right? Somebody is trying to push their own supplement line or their own product or whatever, and you're fighting misinformation that way. Yeah. It, and mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you're doing that extra step and just to put mm -hmm. the information out there because mm -hmm. we're overwhelmed it's information overwhelm it really is and you're right it it's is. not guided by it's guided by the algorithms and mm -hmm. i you know it used to just be oh check web md and people were you know checking everything on web md is that is that do i have this do i have that now well, you're okay, just so that's, a, that's our generation right. right so now there's there's five generations in the workforce five generations listening to this podcast right so my dad's generation, the octogenarians, they would mm -hmm. go find a, a smart colleague that someone at the golf course had recommended to them. And bonus, if they had an Ivy League education, you were going to go straight to the thought leader mm -hmm. and their word was God, you know? Mm -hmm. Then there's our generation that's like, okay, WebMD or Google. Then there's, you know, maybe the elder millennials who are like a YouTube. And then the millennials, maybe Instagram. And then there's TikTok for Gen Z and the younger, right? So people have a very different experience about health. And yet getting a busy brain is universal to all these generations. And the overwhelm is the busy brain. Like, where do I go? What do I choose? So mm. friends listening, tuning in <laughs> or watching on YouTube, wherever you put your headphones on, take the busy brain test. Brain test. Find yes. out where you are. I'm putting a link into the listen notes so that you can do that. And yeah. oh my goodness, it is a new year. Do something 
new for yourself to calm that busy brain, to cure the busy brain and get a copy of Dr. Romy's book. Thank Do they you. really call you Romy the homie? I love that. Homie Romy. Homie yeah. Romy. <laughs> and I- homie Dr. Romy or <laughs> Dr. Auntie Romy, depending on, you know, if I'm being in my matronly mood or yeah. if I'm actually chilling out in that. Yeah. So homie Dr. Romy or Dr. Auntie Romy are the two things I respond to. Yes. I, and yeah. what I love about that is you make yourself approachable by doing that. <laughs> right? Because you know, that's the I other thing in the world of medicine yeah. is that you we feel like you that. get like 10 yeah, minutes with your doctor. Sure. So yeah. thanks for you being know, that I, kind of person. I think I always had that, and it was to the dismay of a lot of my pale, male, stale colleagues in neurology when I originally entered. But, you know, I I give my aunties credit Mm -hmm. for that, keeping me humble. And I think my sass and soul and storytelling came from my aunties. But also, I grew up in a small town Mm. in the Midwest. Like, shout out to all the Midwesterners listening, right? Like, you keep it real. Like, right? Oh, my God, where are you from, Hillary? Yes. Are you originally a Midwesterner? Me? No, I'm yeah. just doing a shout out. I actually oh, went to sc- okay. I went to school in Texas and my master's okay. in Louisiana, but I'm from oh, cool. New York. New York. Okay. Upstate. So you've been Upstate. all over. You've yeah, been all yeah. over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Military and media <laughs> moved me around. So <laughs> I like that. I get that. I all get right. That. So you're fun. I want to play a game with you. My okay, listeners love go. this. And we're going to, okay, this is a little it. brain candy for you. That's what I call okay. it. Okay. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to actually throw out a word and I want you to come back with the first word that comes to mind. Do a little word association in the new year. Let's see oh, where God. the brain is at. Okay. Let me breathe so I can <laughs> off my like analytical brain and just give you the first thing that's like coming out. And these okay. are all words that you mentioned during this talk. It's nothing okay. crazy. Okay. Okay. See, you know this stuff. You're like throwing out chapters, exactly knowing exactly what's in each chapter of your book, which, by the way, is really brilliant to really know your book that well. So, yeah. Okay, here we go. Busy. Productivity. Mm. Burnout. Intuition and healing. Mm. Mindfulness. Mm. Mindless. Evolution. Revolution. Love that. Neuroscience. Geek girl. <laughs> With you on that. Stress. Peak performance. Brain. Gut. Mm. And oh, this is two words, but I just love this quote from you so much. Soul compass. That's sacred and doesn't deserve a word. Oh. Yeah, sorry, because that like wow. when you say soul tempest, it's just I love that. No, please. Mm-hmm. That is mm-hmm. perfect. But I just thought of one other word, and you might actually Go have the same it. response, but I love that. Uh ancestry. Gratitude. Mm. And doesn't it always end with gratitude? Everything. When when you brain shift, it does. Yeah. I think I really want to say this because when you're in this place of busy brain or burnout, someone can come along and just be like, what are you thankful for? You need to have a gratitude journal. And you're like, life is in a dark hole right now. I don't feel thankful. And it's okay. I've been there. And you think you'll be thankful when you cross off one more item off your to-do list or or whatever. But um, my hope for anyone listening that's in that dark place right now is know that Hillary and I are here holding that space for your healing, that you will brain shift out of that darkness and come to that place of gratitude. And and that's like it. Well, thank thank you for linking me to you on that. I really appreciate that. Your presence, your presence, (laughs) you're you're holding this vessel for me to just spew because I'm not sure this, I love where this podcast has gone, by the way. This wasn't like any of the planned questions. This is awesome sauce. You were a brilliant interviewer. (laughs) You know, here's the, thank you for that. And my, my thought on that is that I'm, It's about being the active listener. I can come in here and ask you a series of questions that you might have even given me, which you didn't, by the way. You you left this open to me. But it really, for me, is to be inquisitive and be Mm -hmm. an active listener and listen to the answers so that I can have a follow-up question. This is something I tell Mm -hmm. my my college students all the time because I've been a college Mm -hmm. professor of of journalism for like over 10 years, is that you have to be the active listener, you know? 
And just you can learn something by not already thinking about the next question by sitting mm-hmm. there in the moment and being present in that perfect now moment. Because I, mm-hmm. I, there are a lot of takeaways I got from this conversation mm-hmm. that I'm so grateful for. So thank you for that. Thank you. So I want to close and, uh, and you actually already shared this, but is there anything else you would like to share with listeners? Mm-hmm. Of the One more thing. Yes, please do. Yeah. If you, if you take the busy brain test and your score is high or you're even sitting there going, I don't need to take no test. My life and my brain are falling apart. I want to tell you one thing that I wish was said to me when I was sitting in the surgeon's office about to go undergo surgery. My sisters, my brothers, your brain is not broken. Your mind is not a mess and hope did not depart your soul. And so it is. And so it is. I felt that. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for everything you're putting out there in the world. Thank you for putting a pen to paper and writing this brilliant book. You're an inspiration uh, as I sit writing my own book, mm-hmm. and I need to hear this Ooh, from other authors. Keep, yeah. keep me posted on how <laughs> it's going. I will be cheering you on. Thank you. Enough about mm-hmm. me. It's all about you, but I, I appreciate that. But these are the moments that really inspire me, touch, move, and inspire me. And I know if it's hitting me, with these headphones on, it's going to hit the, those who are okay. tuning into this show. And so please get this book, my friends. It is on pre-order and it it drops on January 9th, The Busy Brain Cure, the eight-week plan to find focus, tame anxiety, and sleep again. You have eight weeks. You have two months to do this for the rest of your life. Imagine putting this book in your library and sharing it with your doctor, like Dr. Romy said, or sharing it with a family member or sharing it as a family, you know, read it together. I love when families do that. Mm -hmm. And also take a moment to take the busy brain test that is all going to be in the podcast notes. Dr. Romy, thank you so much. You are a joy. You are a gift. And I am so grateful to know you. And so it is. I want you to start the new year off right. You're going to grab a copy of Dr. Romy's book, The Busy Brain Cure, by visiting the listen notes for this podcast. And you'll also find The Busy Brain Test. It is absolutely free, as well as how you can connect with Dr. Romy and make that brain shift in the new year. And if you're looking for more ways to be kind to your mind, I would love if you would join me in the Hug It Out Collective Facebook group. Let's turn those traumas into triumphs. Let's continue to have the conversations about how to cure that busy brain, how to support each other. You'll find that link in the listen notes as well. And if you are touched, moved, and inspired by this conversation as much as I am, let me and Dr. Romy know. Share your thoughts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you are tuning in. We are on all podcast platforms. You can even hit that record button at speakpipe.com slash holistically speaking and amplify your own voice because I would love to hear from you. Holistically Speaking is edited by Two Market Media with music by Lipbone Redding and supported by you. So thank you. And as we enter this new year, create the space and the grace for a better you so that you can flourish, so that you can grow and really give love to that beautiful brain of yours. It'll thank you for it. I love you. I believe in you. And I will see you next week. Be well. I know.